Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Dave and behind me you can see my John Deere mower, the ZZ355E. In the last video you saw me fitting up the rear bumper and hitch kit to this mower and all that went pretty easy and I'm really happy with the final result of it. And in the last week I've just been doing some mowing around the property. We had just a little bit of rain and that brought on the grass just enough to give it the first cut. And for us here in Australia, it's just in springtime going into summer and it's the very beginning of our grass cutting season. Now I've had this mower for just over 12 months and I've done regular checks and checked the oil and the air in the tyres for example, but I've never given it its very first service. And that's what today's video is about, is servicing my John Deere mower. My Z355 I bought in about the middle of 2022 and it's just um, a little bit more than 12 months old. It's only done about 26 hours of operation. I tend to do about 25, 26 hours a year in grass cutting so it's really only done one season so far. And the service book says that it doesn't need to have any sort of service or oil change done uh, until 50 hours but it has been 12 months since I've owned the machine and I just tend to always try and change the oil and a filter in my machines even if I'm not using them that much. You can have a look under the seat here, it has a sheet that gives you the surface um, intervals here and it does say that the first service isn't due until 50 hours where you have to change the oil, the oil filter, um, you have to check the mower deck height and whether it's level and you also um, have to check the spindles and lubricate the spindles on the mower deck. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through that process and just um, show that oil change. And interestingly enough on this machine, it has this quick change or quick drain system where it's just got this hose that lays down and allows you to drain the oil out into a pan. Uh, normal engines would have a, um, a bolt or a plug or something on the bottom of the engine and you end up with oil running down and dripping down through the through the machine and makes quite a mess. So it'll be interesting to see how this quick change system works. The only concern I do have is this um, oil line here I have, it just looks like a normal oil pipe and to be able to put it up in its normal position here it does mean that it's got a um, quite a crease or a mark that's starting to appear in this pipe here and I just I just question the durability of that when it's bent up all the time whether it's going to cause an issue or whether the pipe may fracture later on. Um, if you've got a machine like this then let me know whether you've ever had any problems and had to change the oil pipe on that because it doesn't look that flash but I guess the system works we'll see. So we're going to change the oil um, and put a new filter on. The filter is around this side and I have noticed on here that there's a little type of recessed area in here and I'm thinking this might just be a drain area for any oil that may come out of the filter when you spin the filter off whether it sort of gets caught in this area we'll see on that. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mower deck over here and if you look under the spindle cover here um, down the bottom there are actually some grease fittings or zerk fittings under here and we're going to put some grease in there. So there's one of those on each of the three spindles, we're going to do that. And normally that would be all you would have to do for the service on this machine. But I'm going to go a little bit further and what I want to investigate is just to have a look at this area in here, which is this front, um, I don't know what you call it, spindle area in here. And this seems to be the weak problem on these particular mowers. And if you look at a lot of reviews, um, you'll see that people complain about this system because um, the reason is there's no grease fitting around here to put grease in this swivel plate at all. And it's only a plastic bush in there and it does wear quite quickly. And if you don't keep maintenance up on it, then um, it can get very worn and the steering here gets very sloppy. I don't know why they wouldn't just put a, a zerk fitting or something on the side here which would make it a lot easier. Now this doesn't need to be done now, certainly after 26 hours, but 
I just want to take that out, um, unbolt this and that whole spindle drops down and just see how much grease is actually in there from the factory. And uh, if need be, I'll just put a bit more in there. I think on the later models, these have been modified a little bit. I think there's a, a bearing down the bottom here now that they put in here. It may still have a plastic upper, but I think there's a bearing in the new models. So that's certainly a, a point that I think they've, um, they've picked up on because as I said, most reviews you see on these mowers, everybody has something to say about those spindles. Right, let's do the oil change first. So I've just loosened my dipstick um, out a bit so I can get some air in there. That's going to help drain the oil out. I'm just going to take this out of its clip position and then um, turn this and take the cap off. It's just like a half a twist lock type thing there. And then I'm going to lay it down and hopefully the oil will come out. slowly. I have run the machine for a couple of minutes already to get the oil warmed up so um, it should come out okay. It's coming out very slowly but yeah, yeah it is certainly coming out. So I've got my hand here holding the pipe down as low as I can get it. Now you can see that the oil is coming out, but it's not coming out real fast. There's only a very small stream and the engine does take quite a bit of oil. So I think this is going to take a while to actually empty it. Okay, well, my thoughts on that is that I really don't think I like this system at all. To get any of the oil to come out, you have to hold the hose quite flat down with your hand you have to sort of hold it all the time to get the end of it here low enough that it's going to drain the oil out. Um, there is a metal um, clip here as well on the hose down there and all that's done is scratched all the the paint off the machine there because it's right at the end of where you're trying to hold the hose. Um, I tried a couple of different places thought, well maybe it comes out here and goes through that hole there and drains um, but now my um, bumper and hitch thing is sort of in the way. Does it go down beside the tyre? Do you stick it down there but then oil is just going to drain all over your tyre? And there is actually a place in here, I don't know if you can see it, back in there there's a receptacle that I thought well maybe you just stick it down in there and oil drains down. So I'm not too sure what the best way is but it's certainly not fast. It's supposed to be a quicker system but by the time you stand here with your hand on it for 10 minutes waiting to drain the oil out, I don't think it's anything but fast. Okay, we'll get the filter off now and I've got my band or system that I usually use for removing oil filters. And this is just like a web, like a seat belt material. Um, and it usually just wraps around the filter and you wind it up to get it tight. There's not a lot of room between the filter and the whatever housing this is down here. Anyway, we'll see how tight it is. Often from the factory all this stuff is super tight. Whereas it doesn't need to be. Okay, I'll see if I can move it at all. Oh, it is tight. No movement yet. Oh, okay, there we are. Take that out. Now I might just put my shop towel underneath here, having no idea how much oil is going to spew out of this thing. I can just now take that a bit and I guess initially there will be some oil will come out. Yep, you can see there it's actually draining into that little tray so I'm guessing that's what the tray is for. How much it holds I don't know. It's filling up, it's filling up. Spin that off, spin that off, here we go. And take it out. I don't know if you can see down there, but it's oil has come out and it's managed to fill up that little well area and sort of contain it. So that's that's not a bad idea. 
Okay, we're going to put some new oil and a filter into the machine and what I'm using today is the um, John Deere branded Tough Guard oil. This is an SAE 10W30 oil and I'm going to put a, an original John Deere uh, branded filter in. This is an AM125424. This filter is pretty generic across a lot of different mowers tend to use the same filter. And people out there are probably saying, why would you want to go to the extra cost of using John Deere product when you can just buy a generic oil? Well, I did actually just check online just then, and to get 5 litres of a SAE 10W30 oil, the cheapest I can find online is $49. For this from John Deere, I paid $43. For the filter, the original um, John Deere filter cost me $15, and the cheapest I can buy in a generic brand online is $17.50. So it's actually cheaper to use the John Deere product. So that's a bit weird. Um, the other option you can do is to buy a maintenance kit from John Deere. And this um, has a couple of different items or extra items in it. It's got the two quarts of oil, it's got the air filter, the oil filter, and also a spark plug or spark plugs. This particular maintenance kit is for my L 110 so this number isn't correct here I'll put the correct number down the bottom here of the maintenance kit you need for the Z355E. Um, I do buy these I think these are pretty good value actually um, they cost anywhere from about $95 up to about $120 depending whether you have a two cylinder model or a single cylinder model um, but certainly everything's in the kit oh, and it also includes a um, doesn't show it in the picture here but it includes a fuel filter as well and a service sticker um, which is good but in my case I've only done 26 hours I'm already blowing out the air filter um, I don't need a new fuel filter I certainly don't need new spark plugs so for today's exercise all I'm doing is going to use two litres of my tough guard and put a new filter on all right we'll put the filter on I'll just get a bit of oil and run it around that rubber seal That's good. And I'll just spin that on. It's in a pretty good spot actually. It's um it's not too hard to put on at all. And I do check that you're putting the right filter on the machine. Um, which I did check. And I'm just gonna do that up hand tight. about three quarters of a turn and that should do me and that will be the job This one has to be checked with the dipstick all the way down. It's a little bit under. It's almost at those two marks there. I think I'll run it and then I'll check it again. Looks to be about right. Now while you're putting grease into this centre mower spindle, up here there's a idle wheel and it also has a grease fitting just in under there which you can also grease. A little bit tricky to get the grease gun in there, but we'll be right. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll just check the tyre pressure. The bigger tyres on the back, the recommended pressure for those ones are 
10 psi. They do go up to 24, but the recommendation is for 10. That one's okay. Now the ones on the front, the recommendation pressure for these ones is 15. This tire does go up to 40 psi, so you can vary it a bit, but I'll just leave it at the recommended level. Okay, we're just going to have a look at the air filter. I've actually cleaned this one not so long ago, but we'll just run through what you need to do for that one. So just loosen these two little bolts off here, take the cover off, and that's the air filter. It's held in place by a, a clip at the back here, and it just puts pressure onto a rubber seal at the front. So just get the back with your thumb and just lift it straight up, and it'll come out. And then you can blow that out with an air gun. If it gets really dirty, you could replace it. Um, this one's not too bad. Just pay particular attention to this front seal on the top there and also on here to make sure that it is getting good contact. I have noticed when I put it on that it just seems to be sometimes a little loose and it just worries me that it's actually sealing up properly. Um, to put it on, just line that up again, push it forward and then just click it in the back and then that's it. And just have a look down there and just make sure that that seal is nice and tight down there. It does get a tremendous amount of dust at the back of the machine, I've noticed here. And it does seem to get quite dirty quite quickly, this air filter. Okay, we're just going to take this out now and drop this spindle out and see whether there's much grease in there. It just lifts off and that drops down. Well, surprise, surprise, look at that. There's actually a bearing in the top there. And uh, there's actually a bearing down the bottom as well. So that's that's interesting because all the YouTube clips and comments I've seen about these mowers saying that these is just a plastic bush, but they must have done an upgrade sometime and changed them to to a proper bearing, which is which is great to see. Um, this is a December 2021 model, so maybe about then they changed over from the plastic bush. Well, can I just say that was very surprising. I didn't know that when I took that spindle out that I would actually find proper bearings in there. All the YouTube videos that I've seen lately looking at the problems with this particular model mower all mention the fact that these front spindles are plastic and they wear really badly. So they must have made a change somewhere in the production line to put bearings in there. But that's a pleasant change. I'm glad they did put them in. So that was our very first service and that was a 50 hour service and the machine hasn't done 50 hours but it has been over 12 months and I always try and tend to do that that change the oil or the filter at least every 12 months in equipment if it's not being used all the time. One thing I'd like to um, ask or suggest to you is that if you are working on your own equipment and it is still under some sort of warranty that you check with your dealer to make sure that it is okay for you to do the work. Most of them are fine. I did ring my local John Deere dealer and I said, listen, this is what the service is. And they said, yep, that's fine. You can go ahead and do it yourself. And I did use, in the end, original um, John Deere oil and an original John Deere filter. So it was all pretty easy. Happy done. Now I can look forward to um, further mowing all the way through summer and um, to keep the grass in check. Although this summer, it's going to be really dry, so I don't think the grass is going to grow much this year. So I may not actually put many more hours on this mower this summer. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.